Andrea Joyce, and welcome to the Women's National Championship. Ranked number one most of the regular season, Virginia is trying to finish the season number one. For Tennessee, the magic number is three. The Lady Vols looking for a third unprecedented national title under head coach Pat Summit. I'll join you back up here at halftime, but right now, let's send you down courtside to Brad Nessler and Mimi Griffin. All right, Andrea, thanks so much, and happy Easter to you and to everybody. Welcome to New Orleans, the big game. It's Tennessee and Virginia, and last year, Pat Summit's Tennessee team wanted so desperately to play on their home floor in Knoxville in the Final Four, and this Virginia team, Mimi, is the one that got in the way. Brad, there's a definite revenge factor involved, but that game was just for a regional championship. This is for the national title, and I guarantee you, this is where Tennessee wanted to meet Virginia again. Let's talk about the matchup today. We expect to see an inside-outside game, don't we? Virginia is dominated by their perimeter people. They love to run the ball and watch for Dawn Staley to lead that running. She will lead the offensive and defensive efforts for this Virginia team. So the perimeter will make it go for the Cavaliers. Meanwhile, Tennessee likes to pack it inside and with great reason. Absolutely. They have an All-American center in Deja Charles. She's an imposing figure inside, and she's their first option on offense. Watch for them to pound the ball inside as much as they can to Deja. So it's the SEC against the ACC. You work all year for this chance. The Volunteers and the Cavaliers have it in a moment. CBS Sports coverage of the 1991 NCAA Women's Basketball Championship game is sponsored by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why more people are winning with the heartbeat of America. AT&T, the right choice. And by Nike, who reminds you to just do it. The Crescent City of New Orleans, and it has been a fine host all week long to all the young women who have showed up here for the Final Four. And the two survivors, Tennessee and Virginia, about to have at it. Right now, let's go cross-court and get a report on one of the stars for the Cavaliers. Let's go to Mary Carrillo. Mary? Brad, Dawn Staley was a big part of yesterday's story. She cramped repeatedly in her calf. This has been a problem she's had since freshman year. A battery of doctors from the state have looked at her, and it's a widely held theory that her diet has got a lot to do with it. She doesn't eat much, and what she eats doesn't do much good for her. She eats a lot of junk, and on game day, she not hardly ever eats at all. This morning, she took in a little bit of bread, and she's had some electrolyte supplements and some vitamins and such, but this has been a problem with her, Brad. Back to you. She had a problem late in the second half, but made a big steal that preserved the Cavaliers win in the semifinal round. Let's meet the starting lineups, the Cavaliers and the Lady Volunteers, and go to our PA announcer, Ron Berry. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the University of New Orleans Lakefront Arena for today's NCAA Women's National Championship game between the Virginia Cavaliers and the University of Tennessee Lady Volunteers. And now for the starting lineups of today's ball game. First, Virginia, at forward, a 5'10 senior from Roxbury, Massachusetts, number 23, Tanya Cardoza. For Tennessee, at forward, a six-foot sophomore from Louisville, Tennessee, Kentucky, number 21, Lisa Harrison. Forward, a 6'2 junior from Mount Airy, Maryland, number 21, Melanie Wagoner. For Tennessee, at forward, a 6'3 senior from Detroit, Michigan, number 32, Deidre Charles. Center, a 6'5 sophomore from Palos Verdes Estates, California, number 30, Heather Burge. For Tennessee, at center, a 6'2 junior from Maryville, Tennessee, number 34, Kelly Castile. For Virginia, at guard, a 5'5 junior from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Number 24, Don Staley. For Tennessee, at guard, a 5'4 sophomore from Cleveland, Tennessee. Number three, Jody Adams. For 
Virginia at guard, a 5'6 junior from Eldred, New York. Number 32, Tammy Reese. For Tennessee at guard, a 5'10 junior from Canton, Michigan. Number 11, Dina Head. And the coaches for Virginia in her 14th season, Debbie Ryan, and for Tennessee in her 17th season, Pat Summit. One of perennial power. The Virginia Cavaliers are looking for their first title. We'll find out who's going to win it when we tip it off in a moment in New Orleans. National Championship from Lakefront Arena in New Orleans, Louisiana. The Tennessee Lady Volunteers, 29 and 5. The Cavaliers of Virginia, 31 and 2. Patty Broderick and Lou Pitt are our officials. This is what you work for from October until now, Easter Day. And it will be a much happier holiday for whoever comes out on top. Jolie Adams the point for Tennessee. You're going to see Virginia in this man-to-man -man defense for most of the game. They like to create some pressure through their man-to-man, -man, try to create some turnovers and get into transition. Adams outside. Can't get it from Staley the rebound. Here's what Virginia wants to do. Push it. But they don't want to turn it over. Got to be a few jitters out there, Mimi, right now. Not only a few jitters, Brad, but having played the semifinals only yesterday, I'm going to wonder if fatigue doesn't become a factor before too long in this game. Reese all over Adams, who feeds in low to Castillo. She struggled offensively yesterday and missed that shot, cleared off by Wagoner. And Tammy Reese on the run. Can't get it to go, but she draws the foul. You know, you would think after just playing yesterday that these teams would take some time and maybe just talk about the game, but both teams were in here this morning walking through the motions. Rebounding is a big factor for both teams. Both coaches told us it was a key for both of them. Look at Melanie Wagner strip this ball right away from the Tennessee players. Tammy Reese at the line. 78% free throw shooter misses her first attempt. When you look at these two teams, you can see Dawn Staley taking water. You know that the doctor told her to do that. When you look at these teams in their front line, I think you'd have to give the edge to Tennessee. They're a much more experienced and stronger front line. Tammy Reese missed both free throws. That's a rarity in itself. We're a minute in the game and scoreless. Lena Head drives on Staley off the glass. One of the problems with Tennessee yesterday was no one wanted to take charge offensively. I'm sure Pat Summit talked to Dina Head overnight and said, hey, listen, just go and do what you can do. Wagoner looked inside and comes back to Staley on top. Down to 10 on the shot clock. Staley on the drive with a left hand. in low for the first time to Deidre Charles who missed in close and a whistle on the rebound and a foul I think on Lisa Harrison who pushed off nope it's going to go on Virginia Pat Summit told us that one of the things that concerns them the most is this woman right here Dawn Staley number 24 look at this nice crossover move the problem with trying to defend this Virginia team is you can go with their first and second option but when Dawn Staley tries to create for herself then you're in trouble the foul was on Wagoner her first Dean ahead, in close. Tough shot. Dean ahead with the four points this for Tennessee. A, a great sign for Tennessee. They were really stagnant offensively yesterday, but already they're attacking that basket. Burge buries it from 15. Heather Burge, who had a big second half yesterday with her first basket. And you can see Virginia trying to throw some token full court pressure. Debbie Ryan wanted a traveling call on Dina Head and let the official know about it. This Virginia defense did not react the way they normally react in yesterday's game against Connecticut because of the outside scoring threat. Dina Head, that last 
foot slid on her a little bit. Turnover, the, the first for Tennessee. The point I was going to make is that Virginia takes a lot of chances defensively. They'll double on you and sometimes triple on you to try to create the turnover. They didn't do it yesterday. I think it took them out of their game offensively as well. Cardoza, who was the offensive machine for the Cavaliers yesterday, had it blocked by Charles and Harrison, and now a jump ball, and the possession arrow will be in Virginia's favor. We are less than three minutes into the game and tied at four at Lakefront Arena. Tammy Reese and Jody Adams going at it on top with a couple of competitors they are. Outside is Staley no good and David Charles the rebound. Tennessee slow it up and play that half-court game, won't you, maybe? They prefer that because they feel they have the strength in the front court. Whistle, foul before the move by Dina Head. And the foul will go on Don Staley. I really think this Virginia team, to be successful this afternoon, has to run the ball. They've got to get a number of points off transition, and again, that has to come from their defense. That means taking chances. The inbound play to Charles. Deidre Charles has missed two from that spot. And here comes Virginia on the run. That was too far in front of Heather Bird, who takes a spill into the basket. Here's how these clubs got here. Virginia struggled a bit with the Huskies of Connecticut, but prevailed, and Tennessee had to come from behind to beat the defending champion Cardinal of Stanford. A couple of excellent semifinal games yesterday, and here the very next day, these two teams having a go at it. And as Mimi said, we'll find out who the fittest is, I guess, before it's over. You know, I think the biggest difference is going to be in the defense. When you're tired, you just can't play the defense the way these two coaches preach it. Lisa Harrison with the offensive foul. Second team foul on the Lady Vols. Tied at four. Both clubs, as they did yesterday, starting slow offensively. Nice cut to the hoop by Heather Bird. She's got four. Although they're starting slow, it's a good sign that they are attacking the basket. They might not be making the shots yet, but yesterday they weren't even attacking. Dina Head's been the most effective offensive performer for the Lady Vols so far. Nice hook pass into Charles. And Deidre Charles still trying to find the basket. And she's going to pick up a foul instead. 15.40 to go first half. The Virginia Cavaliers in front by two. Easter holiday being celebrated in New Orleans, but an anniversary as well, maybe 10 years of NCAA women's basketball. And what a tremendous 10 years it's been. We'll show the champions of each year. Southern Cal with great Cheryl Miller. That era, that old Dominion team beating a Georgia team that I thought may have been one of the most talented ever in women's basketball. The defending champion Cardinal of Stanford bounced out yesterday. Tennessee, as you saw, a two-time title holder trying for an unprecedented third, trailing early here to the Cavaliers of Virginia. Tennessee's decided they're just going to go every other year for a national championship. <laughs> <laughs> and that wouldn't even please Pat Summit. Would no, it wouldn't. She's been to the Final Four 11 times in 15 years. Heather Burge got a little too deep under the basket, missed the shot. And the ball still loose, a big collision. Lisa Harrison and Dawn Staley, and out of the pack comes Tanya Cardoza for her first basket. It's the little things in a national championship game that win you the ball game, and going after the ball on the floor is one of those little things. I think Lisa Harrison has some blood in the mouth, and uh, they're going to stop play. She had a big collision on the other end with Dawn Staley. And here you can see as all team members scramble for that ball, and Lisa Harrison coming in, getting hit in the mouth by Dawn Staley's head. Mm. So Lisa is heading to the locker room. Nope, she's heading to the bench. She'll sit down and make sure she's still got all the teeth. 6-0 run right now for Virginia in the last two and a half minutes, and they lead 8-4. Dina Head with a jumper. 
just inside the three-point line, and Tennessee has been all Dean ahead. He's got all six points. And Nikki Caldwell, number 33 for Tennessee, came in for Lisa Harrison. She's a three-point shooting specialist, so watch for her to do that this afternoon. Staley guarded by head, works with a spin move inside. <laughs> tell you that's what Pat Summit fears is that creativity she literally went through three Tennessee players and nearly came up with the steal but she'll be called for the foul the Tennessee defense fronting the post you can see Kelly Castile with nice defensive effort but look at Dawn Staley she goes past one goes past Kelly Castile and Deidre Charles gives her a little a little trouble, but hey, the player of the year puts it in the basket. Kelly Castile looked like a matador there. She just kind of <laughs> tried to get a hand on Dawn Staley, the player of the year in college basketball. Staley has just picked up her second foul, though, on the other end, and that could be trouble. Turnover, Tennessee. Birds with a steal. This and ahead on the runs, Cardoza. <laughs> Tennessee got a break there. Brad, this pace is definitely favoring Virginia. It's exactly what they want to do. They'll go running up and down the floor with you. Caldwell walked with it on the baseline. Turnover number four against the Lady Volunteers. Nikki Caldwell didn't have a great game yesterday, and Pat Summit told me after the game that she thought Nikki was about to. Pat Summit's going to go to her bench. Regina Clark will come in, and Nikki Caldwell sits down. Regina Clark is one of the quickest members of that Tennessee team, and she'll be good if the Tennessee Volunteers do go into a transition game. Tennessee can ill afford those turnovers that you just saw because Virginia can turn it into points in a hurry. Tammy Reese hits the outside jumper. That's her first basket. And now it's a six-point Virginia lead. It's a great sign for Virginia because that kind of outside shooting was, was lacking yesterday in the Connecticut game. Tennessee simply has to get Deidre Charles involved offensively. She's 0 for 3 from the field. You know, she's involved, though, Brad, but you made the point. She is 0 for 3. She's had shots at the basket. I'm surprised she's not able to put them in. And she still can't connect as she had to shoot over Heather Burge again. The All-American having trouble on offense. And back come the Cavaliers. Staley off the glass. Oh, a behind the back dribble and then off the glass over three people. Tennessee's in a heap of trouble if Staley stays that hot. She's three for four. It's an eight-point lead. Pat Summit says, let's stop it right here. 13.01 to go in the half. Final four basics, one of the big biggest screens in women's basketball, 6'5", Heather Burge, screening for Tammy Reese. She's so tall that no one could possibly come over the top of her. Tammy's got plenty of clearance to get that shot off. That has helped Virginia to an eight-point lead, 14 to 6, under 13 minutes to go first half. See and what Pat Summit came up with for her offense. Brad, Tennessee right now is only shooting 27% from the floor. Virginia, 64%. This was exactly their problem yesterday. Tennessee does not have a good offensive creator. The only one really is Dina Head, but she's not that consistent. Five-second violation. Tennessee with turnover trouble. They've been outscored 12 to 2 in the last five minutes. It is 14 to 6. The Cavaliers in front, and Heidi Burge in the lineup now for the Cavaliers. Staley leaves it for Cardoza. Castile will clear it off for Tennessee. Kelly Castile, who had such a great Mideast Regional Tournament, but has really not been much of a factor on offense for the Lady Vols either. Deidre Charles still looking for her first point. I don't know if she knows which bird she's got behind her right now, or does it matter? Brad, we talked about yesterday how they were stagnant offensively, and again they're stagnant. When they get the ball, and it was a nice follow-up, that's what saved Deidre Charles yesterday in the second half was put back. But Tennessee, when they get the ball, really hesitate before they pass it. They just are too structured in their offensive set. It took Deidre Charles six chances to get her first basket. 14-8. Cavaliers in front. Brad, we talked before the game that I think when teams are tired, it's defense that goes first. And as a result, it's the best offensive team that wins a game in that situation. Jody Adams is going to pick up her second foul as Tammy Reese drove the lane. Something interesting you told me this morning, Mimi, 
normally you find out after that first time out just how tired you are, right? That's right. I thought that the first the first five minutes of this game would be fine because the adrenaline would keep them going. But after that first TV timeout, when they had a chance to sit and rest, that's when the lead starts setting in your legs. The Burge twins are in together now as Wagoner sits down. That's Heather Burge in close, partially blocked by Castile. And a foul inside on Tennessee. And Pat Summit can't believe that one. One of the things she said about this team is that they foul too much and they turn the ball over too much, but they've compensated in other ways, like rebounding, for instance. They've really dominated some teams rebounding-wise, and Pat's not going to let that referee get away with that easily, I'll tell you. Didn't like the foul call on Dina Head, her first. Cross-court pass. Staley, look at her create. She's come to play offense today. Four out of five from the floor is Staley. And again, it's an eight-point lead. There's the points on penetration for the Cavaliers. Lisa Harrison back in there after taking a shot in the mouth early in the game. Castile missed badly. Dina Head scrambling, trying to pick up the rebound, and Heather Burge came out of there with it. And Staley and Reese bring it down together. Tammy Reese, top shot. Brad, this Tennessee team is not an offensive team. The Virginia team is, and I firmly believe that when your legs are tired, you always find room for offense. But defense, you got to dig down deep. Tina Head's been the only offense for the Lady Vols. She comes up short there, and Charles is fouled on the follow. Deidre Charles, two-time All-American. She brings... Her team around her. Peggy Evans will check in. Kelly Castile goes out. Evans was a little bit of an offensive spark yesterday. Maybe she'll help the Tennessee cause. Evans wasn't a little bit of one. She did a tremendous job on the offensive board. And there you can see Jody Adams once again counseling. Before each free throw, Deja Charles goes to Jody Adams, their point guard, who also happens to be the best free throw shooter, and talks to her, helps her visualize free throw techniques, because Deja has not been strong in that aspect. What a coach, huh? Deidre Charles, one of four. Lady Vols to play in the 89 championship. There you see him. Castile, Hahi, Head, and Charles. Deidre told us earlier in the year, I told my high school coach at one time I wanted to be a two-time All-American and win a national title. Well, she's done all of that. She didn't mention two national titles. That opportunity is today. But right now, her team down eight. Tina Head. Picks up the loose ball. Dina Head off the glass, has eight. Smart move by Pat Summit to throw some full court pressure on to stop the momentum of Virginia. Nice job to get back by Lisa Harrison as Cardoza had a step on everybody. And Staley tried to go deep. Tremendous Tennessee pressure, and this is the way they normally play defense. Look at the face guarding here by Jody Adams and all the players, and once they get the ball, they try to strip it, which is what they do. It was a nice change of pace by Pat Summit to throw that at the Virginia team. Tammy Reese with both Burgess in front of her gets it to Heather Burge. Back to Reese. Not a work on a shot. Finally goes inside and it's stolen away again by Tennessee. It's going to be awfully hard to get it into the Burgess against Evans and Charles inside because they are much stronger front line. Tennessee can cut the lead to four if they score. Adams for three and comes off but out of bounds it'll be Virginia ball with nine minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the first half from Lakefront Arena in New Orleans Louisiana it's the women's national championship and right now the team that was number one in the country most of the year the Cavaliers of Virginia leading the two-time champions from Knoxville Rebound, Lisa Harrison with some authority. That's an interesting matchup with Dawn Staley on Dina Head, the point guard, or the two guard, rather, for this Tennessee team right now. Lisa Harrison works for a baseline jumper. 18-14. A 6-0 run for the Lady Vols. 
Dean ahead is doing most of it for Tennessee. Under nine minutes to go first half with Mimi Griffin. I'm Brad Nessler. It's nice to have you along on this Easter Sunday. Tahisha Ward was put into the Virginia lineup by Debbie Ryan. She's a much stronger frontline player, so she'll be able to hold her ground inside. That's not a good shot, whether you're an All-American or not. Tennessee pulls up, drops it to Jody Adams, and will set their half-court offense. Tina Head should have taken it right there. Finally does. Missed on the reload, though. Birds lost the handle. Evans with two chances. And she's fouled. They will call it on Tennessee. Brad Heidi and Heather Burge, although they're 6'5, they're not real strong. So inside when they get the ball, it's going to be important that they keep it way over their head so they can't be deflected. They really can't hold on to the ball. I didn't see that foul. It's on Deidre Charles, number 32, her second. Nikki Caldwell checks in. Dina Head will get a well-deserved rest. Again, watch for Caldwell to shoot it from the outside for this Tennessee team. Substitution for Virginia, too. Dina Evans in there. Cardoza outside. Ferry to three. Five for Tanya Cardoza. And that spreads the Virginia lead back to seven. Feet into Charles. The ball stolen by Cardoza. That's what she did so well yesterday. Burge got behind Charles. Heather Burge with six. And all of a sudden, Virginia has again opened up a nine point lead. Tennessee made a nice run, had a chance to cut it to two as Lisa Harrison hits the jumper. Lisa Harrison was one of the only players yesterday in the first half who really consistently attacked the basket. She didn't have a sh good shooting percentage, but at least she was putting the ball up. At least this score would indicate it's not going to be high scoring, and that should favor Tennessee. But right now they're going to have to make up ground, trailing by seven with just over seven to play. First half. Ball loose, picked up, and a traveling violation on Cardoza. 6.57 to go in the half. It's Virginia by seven. I'd like to say without the Burgess that, that we'd still be here, but there's no way. Um, you know, their height advantage and, and game has brought Virginia to the next level. Um, if it weren't for them last year, I don't believe we'd make the Final Four and, and again this year. Tammy Reese, part of that key perimeter, and there's the key inside play. Heather and Heidi Burge, identical 6'5 twins. That's Heather, and you'll just have to trust me. <laughs> One of the reasons the Burges really are effective offensively for this Virginia team is you have to put a body on them inside. You've got to respect their height. As a result, it opens things up for the guards to be able to penetrate or hit from the outside. Another turnover, each team with seven now, with 6.45 to go first half. A seven-point Virginia lead. There's what the Burgess have done today on the season as an average. They've combined for 24 points and 11 rebounds a game. So if you consider them one person, that's pretty strong inside. Evans lost it. Try to fight back for it, and she'll pick up the foul. All of a sudden, it's Virginia that's struggling offensively, and I think the reason why is because Dawn Staley is not on the floor. She's coming in now, <laughs> Coach. <laughs> <laughs> it's obvious that they need her inside offensively to be able to create things, not just for herself. She's such an unselfish player. That's, she'd much prefer to give an assist to a, to a teammate than take the shot herself. She had 12 assists against Oklahoma State, yet she can score like she did against Stephen F. Austin in the tournament, 25 in that game. She has eight already today. Deidre Charles not in the Lady Volunteer lineup right now, so somebody will have to pick up the hook inside. Castile trying to do it, as fouled as she puts it up. And the foul on Heather Burge. 
That'll be her first. 23-16. Kelly Castile, the MVP of the Mideast Regional. She had 13 points and 13 rebounds against Western Kentucky. 15 points. She almost couldn't miss against Auburn, yet she struggled a little bit here in the Final Four, Mimi. You know, Brad, when, when she was playing in the Mideast Regional, her father and her brothers were on a hiking trip in the mountains of North Carolina to hear the game. They got a Walkman, put a makeshift antenna together, hung it on a tree, and barely heard it, but they listened to the entire game. You gotta love it. <laughs> <laughs> and those uh, brothers and her father are here today to watch in person. It's a little easier for them this time. Yeah. 23-18, under six minutes to go first half, a five-point Virginia lead. Caldwell doing a nice job on defense, on top. Staley. Feeds in low to Heather Burge off the glass, a little short. Dina had the rebound. Here comes Tennessee pushing it with a three on two. Dina Head inside. That's the boy. She's got the play offense. Ten points for Dina Head. I saw Dina Head do the exact same thing in, in their Georgia game this year. She did a nice job of taking control of the offense. She cuts the Virginia lead to three. Staley spins and travels. Sometimes you can have too many moves. This is a great one by Dina Head, though. Even though Tennessee's still shooting poorly from the field, they're doing a nice job of attacking the basket. Dina Head is leading the way on that. It's been an English class today with some of those shots off the glass. Castile backs in, but she skipped her feet. And both teams turnover prone right now. Tennessee has eight and Virginia with nine. Five minutes to go first half at Lakefront Arena. This is the women's championship game. And the Cavaliers lead the Lady Volunteers of Tennessee by three. And we've got an offensive foul on Heather Bird. That's her second. Heather Burge is getting a little frustrated with the physicalness inside. You can see Kelly Castile doing a nice job of putting a body on her. And Heather just using her right elbow a little bit too much, right to the throat. Heidi Burge comes back in to take Heather's spot. Second personal on Heather. Debbie Ryan never expected the Burge twins to develop the, as quickly as they did. She thought they were at least a year away, maybe two. And they came on so strong last year, as Tammy Reese alluded to, they would have never made the Final Four without them. Castile missed the free throw, but Harrison kept it alive. Chance for Tennessee to get to within a point. Evans working on Burge, tried to feed to Castile. Picked out by Virginia. Deidre Charles is going to come back in. Deidre Charles had a slow first half yesterday and then came on strong in the second half to help Tennessee come from behind to win. Deidre had only four points in the first half, ended up with 18 and nine rebounds. And most of that yesterday was on offensive putbacks off the glass. Dina Head, Tammy Reese on her. Deidre Charles too far away from the basket there. 15 on the shot clock. They keep trying to pack it into her, but she doesn't have good position right now. And a lane violation on the Lady Vols. So they have blown a couple of opportunities to get back to within a point in this game, and head coach Pat Summit isn't too crazy about it. There's the shooting. Tennessee is cold and Virginia has been hot. But the Lady Vols have hung tough and with just over four minutes to go in the half, they have only a three-point deficit against the Cavaliers. Tammy Reese didn't get the shooter's roll there. Dina had another rebound in traffic. It's a three-on-one. Cardoza knocked it away, but Evans will have a shot. Boy, that Peggy Evans is a talented freshman. She really is strong inside for this team. This is as close as Tennessee's been since very early in the game. And it's the Tennessee defense that has really gotten them back. I talked about the teams being tired, but they're really digging down deep to come up with some kind of energy to play this defense. Kind of a cheap foul Peggy Evans picked up, and she knows it. That's her first. 
and Pat Summit thinks it's a cheap foul as well. Points to her head to tell Peggy Evans, think out there. An 8-0 run for Pat Summit's Lady Volunteers, though, and they trail by only a point. And you can see that Tennessee has outscored Virginia, and again, their defense created a lot of their offensive opportunities. Takesha Ward at the free throw line. Takesha, a senior out of College Park, Georgia, 6'1". Psychology major. Only a 57% free throw shooter. That one comes off, and the rebound is Deidre Charles. Two-point game. We were tied at two and at four, and have not had a deadlock since. And with three and a half minutes to go, Tennessee can even things up if they score this trip. Not enough movement right now in the Tennessee offense. Harrison, baseline jumper won't go. Battle inside, and the foul's going to go on Peggy Evans. That'll be her second. Both coaches talk about rebounding as being a key, and you can see the teams battling for the board. In the Tennessee locker room, they have a saying painted on the wall. It says, offense sells tickets, defense wins games. You, you've heard that one, but they, they added a line. After the 88 Final Four, the line they added is, rebounds wins championships. And the reason being, Pat Summit said after she saw Leon Barmore's Louisiana Tech team dominate the board in that national championship, she realized that it was rebounding that was the key. Tennessee struggled with their rebounds yesterday. They have the edge here over Virginia. They came back and did out-rebound Stanford, though, by seven yesterday as Heidi Burge misses a free throw. And again, Tennessee can draw even if they score. We've got three minutes to play first half. 24-22, Virginia. Harrison, being ahead, trying to post up Tammy Reese in low, but Harrison works for her own shot, got her own rebound, second chance, still won't go. Charles, tie game. Lisa Harrison didn't have a good scoring day yesterday, but she came away with 12 rebounds. One of the reasons is she follows her shot so well. Now the orange-clad fans of Tennessee on their feet. Their team is drawn even with the Cavaliers. Wagoner, a move in the paint. She's assaulted inside. <laughs> There's a big pile up in there. Ten Tennessee just doing such a nice job on the boards, and this is what Pat Summit wants to see. Lisa Harrison goes after her own rebound. They're really heads up and going after the boards aggressively. She has told her team that for every turnover, she wants to see three boards for every turnover. And they have three boards more on the offensive glass. Pat Summit's got to go to her bench. Kelly Castile comes in because Peggy Evans just picked up her third foul. And Evans, a key reserve inside, and she'll have to sit the remainder of the half. Melanie Wagoner at the free throw line. And Dawn Staley taking some more water. That's a critical thing for her. She ended up with cramps in her calves yesterday. Doctors have told her she's got to take more fluids in during the game. Tennessee's only lead of the game was on the ball game's opening basket. And they have a chance to regain it if they score as Dina Head's fouled by Wagner. That missed free throw on the other end, Mimi. Virginia one for six at the free throw line. And that could be just due to the fact of fatigue as well. When you're tired, the first thing that goes are your legs. And if you don't use your legs, you don't hit your free throw. <laughs> Let's see if Dina Head gets a little bend in hers. There it is. Didn't get the shot, though. Burge trying to clear the rebound. Has it swiped by Harrison. Deidre Charles backs in, spin, and she's fouled. And that is Heidi Burge picking up the personal. Heidi Burge is just trying to hold her ground in there, but Deidre Charles is so strong, she bodies up to her and pushes her out of her way. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet players of the game. In conjunction with the award, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of both schools. Yeah, they did it before. Deidre Charles, who was our player of the game yesterday, at the free throw line. Trying to give Tennessee only its second lead of the game. 
and does. Deidre Charles, and there's Deidre's mother. She was here yesterday cheering her on. Helen's having fun, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Deidre is one of three Miss Basketballs from the state of Michigan that Pat Summit has recruited to Tennessee. The other two being Nikki, I'm sorry, not Nikki Cobra, but rather Dina Head and Peggy Evans. Charles missed the second. Castile put it back in. Again, the rebounding for Tennessee. And the Lady Vols have their biggest lead as they've come from a big deficit to take a three-point cushion with under two minutes to go in the half. Cardoza kicks it out to Reese. Outside jumper for Tammy Reese won't go. Rebounding and defense, two of the things that Tennessee has lived on all year long, continue to do well for them. Dina Head, another of the Michigan connection from Canton, Michigan, on the dribble. Jody Adams had a notion from outside that three-point line. She hit a couple big ones in the second half yesterday. Her baseline jumper won't go. And Cardoza clears off the rebound. Here comes Dawn Staley on the run. Tammy Reese tried to go over Charles, and Charles blocked it, swiped it. And back comes Tennessee. Tremendous help from David Charles inside. She just completely left her player, knew that T Tammy Reese was going to the basket. A 13 to one run. Virginia has met a field goal in the last six and a half minutes. 10 on the shot clock. Right back inside, they go to Castile. Short, and Melody Wagoner the rebound. And the shot clock is off. Virginia can play it for one if they choose. Dawn Staley. Oh, gee, how did she put that ball in? I thought she was almost out of bounds. She was so far into that basket. She's 5'5", five, five, and she somehow got it in there. Dina Head can't get it off the glass. Lisa Harrison might have a chance for one more shot. No good. But Tennessee has battled back. And Pat Summit's Lady Balls have the halftime lead. Tennessee, 27. CBS Sports coverage of the 1991 NCAA Women's Basketball Championship game is sponsored by Honda, maker of fine quality automobiles. Test drive a Honda at your local dealer today. Allstate, for home, auto, life, and business insurance, you're in good hands with Allstate. And by Pizza Hut and their new MVP for topping pizza. Back at Lakefront Arena in New Orleans. Happy Easter, everybody. Welcome back. We were going to be outdone by those clouds we saw going to break there. Brad That's Nestler right. and Mamie Griffin. Good first half. Tennessee had to come from behind. They were 10 points down. you got to give them credit. They didn't shoot that well, but they're right back in the basketball game. In fact, they lead. Defense and rebounding, Brad. Those were the two keys for this Tennessee team in the first half. Tennessee with a one-point lead. Two championships already in the trophy case in Knoxville. They're looking for number three, while Virginia in search of their first national crown and somebody will find out in the next 20 minutes Deidre Charles great spin to the baseline I think that's the exact same move she put on at the first play of the second half yesterday she really came on strong a three-point Tennessee lead nice move inside basket won't go but Wagoner will keep it alive for the Cavaliers and back on top to Dawn Staley Staley, who was so creative for her 10 points in the first half. Wagoner, off the glass, won't go. Deidre Charles now has 10 rebounds to go with her nine points. Dina Head, all the way, and fouled in route. Statistically, in the first half, here's how it looked. Virginia did a nice job inside. Absolutely, and that's what you would expect from this Virginia team. They like to put the ball on the floor rather than shoot it from, from a stationary position. Offensive rebounds. Tennessee owned the offensive glass. And offense, offensive rebounds were big because they put a lot of those back into the basket. Two perimeter players led their teams in the first half, including Dina Head with 10 and a chance to go to 11. She just missed. It's not surprising that in a game like this, it would be Dina Head leading the Tennessee team because she is the best offensive creator that Tennessee has. 
Doesn't always look for her shot, though, does she? No, she doesn't. A lot of times she plays it unselfish, which uh, sometimes hurts the team. Wagoner from 15. Pulls up an air ball. Tennessee will get it back. And they lead by three. Virginia's having a real problem of not passing the ball around in the last two possessions. It was one pass and a shot, sometimes no pass and a shot. They really need to use one another the way they did in the beginning of the game. This is Lisa Harrison, who feeds in low, post to Char. Fouled by Heather Bird. That's going to be three on Heather Bird. Brad, Virginia has to do something to keep the ball out of Deidre Charles' hands. Heather Burge and Heidi Burge are not going to be able to defend her. They're not strong enough. So they've got to double down. They've got to get some weak side help or at least front Deidre so that she can't readily get her hands on the ball. You you're, not, been, you're not going to throw a lob pass over that girl right there at 6'5". You may have been able to read what Debbie Ryan was trying to say. She said, where's the help? Where's the help? That's exactly what Mimi was talking about. Somebody's got to give whether it be Heather or Heidi Burge, a little help against number 32 as Deidre Charles steps up. Ten boards and about to have a double-double if she hits the free throw. Deidre had only nine boards, and I say that facetiously, only nine boards. She already surpassed that in this game, and you would expect your senior All-American to do as much in a championship game. Again, you saw the little conference between Jody Adams and Daedra Charles. It is a free throw ritual to get Daedra in the groove to hit from the strike. And it's working right now. Charles with 11. And Tennessee with its biggest lead. They're up by five as Heidi Burge checks back in for Sister Heather. Brad, Daedra Charles was a Proposition 48 athlete. Her freshman year had to sit out and practice with the team. And she said she actually enjoyed that. It gave her a chance to get used to college life, and she was happy for that year layout. Foul inside on Tennessee. Pat Summit <laughs> says, who are you kidding? Sign language speaks volumes. Kelly Castile picked up the foul. First personal on Castile. 18-28 to go in the ball game. It's a five-point Tennessee lead. Heidi Bird, baseline jumper, buried it. That is her first basket. Now that, the Tennessee lead to three. That's one of the areas the Burgess can help you. If they'll catch the ball and keep it over their head for that short little turnaround shot. Dina Head worked inside and was fouled by Wagoner. And Melanie Wagoner now with three fouls. So Heather Burge and Melanie Wagoner each with three. has some depth in that front court. She's got four players to play two positions, so she has some fouls to give, but the problem is they're just not defending the post players very well at this point. Dina Head, after missing three free throws, hits two in a row. She has 12 points, and the lead again is five with just over 18 minutes to play. Staley spins inside. The move looked good, but it was definitely not effective, and then she added insult to injury to pick up another foul. Three fouls on Dawn Staley, three fouls on Melanie Wagner, and three on Heather Burge. And the Cavaliers are going to have to go to that bench pretty soon that everybody says is so deep. And they're throwing the full court pressure on, which is a smart move to try to get some easy buckets off transition off the steal. Head got past Tammy Reese. Tried to leave it for Charles, but the steal by Staley, and then she turned it over with a double dribble. Boy, I didn't, I didn't really see that, to be honest with you, Brad, and, and it was um, surprising that, that the referee could see it because her vision looked to be blocked by the other players, but let's see if that was a double dribble as the referee saw it. I don't think it was because she really didn't have control of the ball when she took that first. Both players were. Charles had a hand on it, too, I think. Lisa Harrison gets Charles' miss, can't connect on her own shot, and Heidi Bird clears it ahead to Dawn Staley. Cardoza's not been much of an offensive force today as she was yesterday. Pass too deep for Heidi Bird. And Lisa Harrison with a steal. I think the perimeter players for Virginia have to play a much bigger role. They've got to stop trying to get it inside right now. Move it around the perimeter a little bit, get some penetration or maybe an outside shot. Harrison. 
Harrison works baseline. Deidre Charles got in there but lost the handle. Charles wasn't able to hold on to it, but you saw from that exchange just how strong she is. She came from nowhere and grabbed the ball from the Virginia player. 33-28, Tennessee. They trailed by 10 in the first half, came back to lead by one at the break, and now have a five-point cushion on the Cavaliers of Virginia. Cardozo fouled by Lisa Harrison as she went to the hoop. See, the problem right now with Tanya Cardoza is she has to put the ball on the floor to score. She's not looking for a perimeter shot. She had plenty of room because Lisa Harrison was playing off of her. But she wants to be able to score off the dribble. They have to get it in their minds, as they did yesterday against Connecticut. When they get the ball, shoot it right away. Lisa Harrison sits. Nikki Caldwell checks back in. Tanya Cardoza sat out last year due to academic problems. And back this year in a major force on this Cavalier team. Tanya was a starter and leading scorer for this team two years ago. And that year layoff really helped her mature incredibly as a player. As a matter of fact, Debbie Ryan sat down with the three perimeter players, Cardoza, Staley, and Reese, and said, okay, how are we going to work this? You're all leading scorers. And they said, we'll do whatever it takes to get us back to the Final Four and win a national championship. Here they are, and they've got their chance. They trail by three with 16.40 to play. Ahead will take the reins at the top of the key for the Lady Vol. Looking for a screen, trying to work for her own shot. Lady Charles not a threat out there. Eight on the shot clock. Keen ahead. Had it blocked by Burge, got it back, and put it in. What a great move by Dina Head to have the presence of mind to go after her own shot that way. Again, Tennessee by five. Heidi Burge. Nice shot on the left baseline. Heidi Burge with four points. Cuts it back to a three-point Tennessee lead. Pedro Charles faces the hoop this time. Pedro Charles with 13. Virginia shot 50% from the field in the first half. Turnover again as Nikki Caldwell came up with it. I was going to say Tennessee with only 33% from the field in the first half, but they helped make up for it from the free throw line. And that's not usually a position where they're very good. Cody Adams has not had to be part of the offense today, but she can get in the streak and score a lot, too. Charles, that's a tough shot, an air ball. Caldwell in a good spot on the baseline. Virginia really needs a timeout. I, I believe that they're tired. They're trying to throw some full court pressure on, and it's tiring. They're trying to run the ball on offense. Debbie Ryan knows she can get a TV timeout as we pass that point, but there's no break in the action. Staley for three. <laughs> Continuing the call for the full court, court pressure, I think that might not be such a good idea, only because you can tell that the legs are very tired. Tammy Reese doing her best to stay with Dean Head. Tammy Reese played every minute yesterday. Inside, Head. Dina Head is having some kind of championship game. 16 points for the 5'10 junior. Approach 14 minutes to go. It's 41-35. Tennessee in front. Ten on the shot clock as Reese goes in low. And that carom comes off to Melody Wagoner. That's her first basket. 41-37. Ball loose. And it got to the baseline. Turnover Tennessee. But the Lady Vols have a four-point lead. Dina Head has kept Tennessee ahead. She's got 16 points with moves like this. 13.48 to go in the ball game. Tennessee with a four-point lead. We're about 15 minutes east of the city of New Orleans. A great shot of the blimp over New Orleans. We always get great blimp shots. We thought we'd give them a little equal time here. 
And we go across town to Lakefront Arena. Brad Nessler and Mimi Griffin and our CBS crew have seen Tennessee lead by four with 13.48 to go in the ball game. Tennessee trying to win a third title. Virginia looking for their first. They had a lead much of the first half, but Tennessee fought back and had a one-point cushion at the break and now been unable to get anything going really offensively, Mimi, in the second half. Brad, I mentioned it earlier, but I really feel the perimeter players, Reese, Staley, and in particular, Tanya Cardoza, have got to pick up offensively the slack. They're trying to force the ball inside a lot, and their post players just aren't strong enough. Major Charles will pull up. Jody Adams at the point. Nine on the shot clock. Tennessee took a lot of time in the backcourt before getting it down with a chance to do anything offensively, and Dina had walked with it. So back-to-back -back turnovers by these two teams. 13-14 to play. You want to talk intensity? You think if she looked like, at you that way, Brad, you'd do oh, what she is? I've gotten out of her way about three times <laughs> this week alone. <laughs> Heidi Burge off the glass. Sweet shot. Heidi Burge, six this half. She's been most of the offense for the Cavaliers. Cuts the Tennessee lead back to a basket. Nice pass in to Dina Head, but she missed in close. Here comes Dawn Staley. Virginia playing for the tie. Staley can't get it. And jump ball. That was a quick whistle. Sure was. A little pile up in the lane with Heidi Burge and Dina Head. And the possession arrow goes to Virginia. No. Actually, neither coach looks very happy with that call. <laughs> Tammy Reese works inside. Pushed up an air ball. She's tired, I think. She absolutely is tired. She played all 20 minutes in this first half. And all 40 minutes yesterday. Tammy Reese only two for six from the field, as a matter of fact. 41-39, Tennessee. Shot clock there in the corner of your screen. Dean ahead. Rebounded by Taylor Charles. That's why she's so tough. And that's the difference in strength in the post players. Heidi Burge picked up the foul. Virginia doing a nice job of stopping the penetration move by Dina Head with the help. Tanya Cardoso moves in, but there's, when the shot goes up, look at Deidre Charles. First of all, get the rebound, and then just simply clear out Heidi Burge. She's giving away four inches in height, but you'd never know it, would you? Actually, only giving away a couple inches of height. I take that back. 6'5 and 6'3. She backed in on Heidi Burge, who picked up her third personal. Her sister, Heather Burge, on the bench, also with three. And Deidre Charles, 15 points, 12 rebounds in this championship game. Wagoner will pull off the rebound. Staley to create, but the pass picked up by Tennessee. Problem is, Dawn's trying to create, her teammates aren't looking for it. They really need to get some ball movement to get everyone involved, get everyone touching the ball so they're all aware on offense. Four point Tennessee lead with 11 35 now remaining. Title game for New Orleans. Peggy Evans, who had some foul trouble in the first half, back in there for the Lady Vols. Stadra Charles got loose again. She's starting to take over. And Heidi Burge asking to be taken out. She's tired. 45-39. Burge tired, but still got the shot. And Sister Heather is set to come back in to get a break in the action. Heidi Burge, perfect from the field, four for four this half. Head had it knocked away. Staley and Reese. Tammy Reese trying to win the race, but a great job on defense by Caldwell. She came out of nowhere to stop that drive. I don't think Tammy Reese knew that Nikki Caldwell was coming on her heels. 
You can see Tammy took her time controlling the ball here. I don't think she had any idea that Nikki Caldwell was coming. With 10.53 to go in the half, the Lady Vols of Tennessee, with some great defense like that, maintaining a four-point lead. CBS Sports, Pat O'Brien and the crew start things off a prelude to a championship at 8.30. And then it's Kansas and Duke, the two underdogs who are now top dogs in the title game. Jim Nance and Billy Packer will have it for you tomorrow night. A big night of hoops on CBS Sports. Staley buries a three, her second of the half. And it cuts the lead to one. Dina Head pushes it up. Deidre Charles waiting for it. Deidre Charles with 19 points. 47-44. That woman right there has got to do more offensively for this Virginia team, Tanya Cardoza. She's got to look to get her shot. Staley fouled on her way down the baseline. Dina Head's going to pick up the personal. That'll be her second. Ron Staley, everybody's player of the year, it seems. The Naismith Award, the Sports Illustrated Player of the Year Award, the WBCA Player of the Year, Champion USA Player of the Year, you name it, she's gotten it from everybody. That WBCA is the Women's Basketball Coaches Association, which is also celebrating their 10th anniversary year. Tremendous organization for both college and high school coaches all around the country. Jody Adams checks in. Dina Head will get a breather. Likewise, Debbie Ryan has gone to her bench, and for the first time in two days, Tammy Reese gets a break. Inbound pass. That's a tough one. Burge handled it. Went right back to Staley. She's got a lot of traffic inside, and she still rattled it home. 18 for Staley. The two All-Americans carrying their team. John Staley is digging deep to get a shot like that off. Lisa Harrison was wide open on the basket, and the Lady Vols couldn't get it to her. They hold a one-point lead. Adams started by Evans on top. Deidre Charles couldn't handle it. Not the best entry pass in the world, and Deidre Charles let Nikki Caldwell know it. Tammy Reese on the bench with her first break after that much work. And look at the difference in numbers between yesterday and today. Yesterday when she was fresh, today when she's trying to lead this team. We're past the midway point of the second half of this championship game from Lakefront Arena in Louisiana, in New Orleans. Mimi Griffin and Brad Nessler along with you. Championship game, Tennessee and Virginia. A one-point halftime lead for the Lady Vols. Their lead is three now after Peggy Evans hit the jumper. Nine minutes to play. I can't say enough about the way this Tennessee defense has played today. I talk about the fact that when you're tired, defense is usually one of the first things to go, but these players are showing such discipline to be able to play this kind of defense. Staley drives inside, and Nikki Caldwell will pick up the foul. The problem right now is that Dawn Staley is trying to do everything herself. And believe me, sometimes she's capable of it. But there are players on the floor like Tanya Cardoza and Dawn Stanley. Dawn Staley, rather, really having a tough time. Looks like she turned her ankle. Leg cramps yesterday kept her out of part of the second half. We talked about the fact, as Mary told us earlier, the, uh, trainers, the trainers and doctors had to keep a close eye on her and have been pumping fluids in her overnight and early today to no, try to her, keep that problem from happening again. It's her ankle, I think, Brad. You could see on the replay that she did turn her ankle. So Staley, injured, will go to the end of the Virginia bench, and Tammy Reese, who's dead tired, back in there. But she did get a little breather, so she'll have to take over the controls. Each individual player is tired, no question about it. That's when you have to draw on the strength of each other. Burge with a little one-hand hook, can't get it, but got it back. That's Heather Burge. <laughs> Trying to walk it off is the All-American Dawn Staley. While her teammates trail Tennessee by one, <laughs> Evans up over Burge is fouled. And now Heidi Burge has four fouls. Peggy Evans actually had the layup. She was expecting Heidi Birch to go for the block, but Heidi tripped. And Peggy had the time to put it up, but hesitated. 
Heidi Burge right there, number 34, her fourth foul. She is the little sister of Heather Burge, if you want to talk about a six-minute difference in age. Meanwhile, the shoe is gone, and they're going to retape the ankle. Normally, when you turn your ankle, they don't take the shoe off. They usually leave it right on and try to just tape right over that, and that's what they're going to do. He's in some pain, obviously, while Peggy Evans goes to the free throw line for Tennessee. And she short-armed it, and that's a good sign that everybody's getting a little bit tired. It's like a mash unit over there. We've had some injuries the last couple of days, haven't we? Stanford losing their top two players over the course of the tournament, including Julie Zielstra yesterday, who was injured in the pregame warm-ups and didn't get a chance to play. And we've got a lane violation which will give Tennessee another opportunity after two misses by Evans. Brad, there's been only one offensive rebound by Virginia in the last 11 minutes. They've really got to do something about that. And I, I keep saying Tanya Cardoza has to get involved, but she's a very good rebounder. She just hasn't been performing this afternoon. Peggy Evans, see if the third time's a charm here from the stripe. She's missed a couple. She gets another chance thanks to the lane violation on Virginia. And finally got one to go. That's five points for Peggy Evans off the bench. A two-point Tennessee lead. We have 8.25 remaining in this championship game. Tammy Reese now running the show for Virginia with Don Staley, the All-American, out with a bad ankle. There's Cardoza. Partially blocked. Bird got it back and got it off the glass. Heather Bird with 10. Tie game. 50 apiece with eight to play and a collision in the backcourt. And this one is on Heather Burge, and now she's got four. <laughs> Trying to get a trap in the backcourt here, Mimi. And the Virginia team still throwing that full court pressure. And you've got Jody Adams trying to control the ball at 5-4, running into a six foot five trap. Jody Adams ran into Burge about waist high and went down. And now she goes to the free throw line because Tennessee will be in the bonus the rest of the way. And Dawn Staley has her ankle taped up and she's getting ready to come back into the game. That is Jody Adams' first point of the day. Dawn Staley is back. Tanya Cardoza will sit down. Except for the Burge twins, you see Heather right there. This is a very short lineup for this Virginia team. They've got three guards, plus the two six-five Burge twins. Heather Burge with a rebound off the Adams miss. A one-point game. Virginia can regain the lead if they score. Three-pointer by Reese. Basket's good. Now let's see on the foul inside. You can tell what Tammy Reese is saying. No basket. I thought that shot was up. And so did Debbie Ryan. Oh, boys, Debbie Ryan hot. I really felt that that shot was off before the whistle blew. You can see set up. They're pushing inside. You can see the shot goes up. But we can't hear the whistle. You can tell by the way the players turned, though, when the whistle blew. And I think the shot was up. Tennessee by one. And we'll be back. controversy of that last shot that would have given Virginia a two-point lead. Listen very closely to the whistle on Tammy Reese's shot. There is no question that that shot was in the air when that whistle blew. It should have been good. It should have been a three-point shot and the foul. The ball looked to be at least halfway to the hoop. And Debbie Ryan making that very well known to the official, but the basket didn't count. And so Virginia trails by one instead of having a two-point lead. A big, big play that could be a key play before this one's all over. Let's remember those three points at the end of the game. Burge can't get it. Charles can. 13 rebounds for Deidre Charles. Tennessee now slows it and goes into that half-court game. Foul, they're going to call Lisa Harrison for an elbow. That's three on Lisa Harrison, trying to get position inside on Bird. Pat Summit's going wild. 
over that call on the sidelines. I don't think there's going to be an Easter basket in either one of these <laughs> officials' dressing rooms when this one's all over. Let's go to Mary Carrillo, cross court. Mary? Playing two days in a row has affected Pat Summit as much as anyone else here, Brad. Her, her voice is so hoarse, you should hear her on these changeovers. She sounds, she says, up it, up it. It's like, um, if, she, if she said, phone home, I, I think you were E.T. She can barely be heard. Back to you, Brad. Well, she doesn't have any more games to coach this year. She's hey. in the biggest one of the season. Hey, Mary, E.T. <laughs> Pat Summit might be down to sign language before this one's all over. We've got seven minutes to play. It's a one-point Tennessee lead. I'll tell you, her body language speaks volumes. I don't think she needs a voice. Staley over a double team. And that might be it for Heidi Bird. One of the 6'5 inside players for Virginia is gone. Heidi Burge fouls out eight points this half. And there's Mr. Burge looking on. He's got one daughter left in the championship game. Eight points and six rebounds. He played well. She's only a sophomore. She'll have plenty more days to play. While Heidi takes the seat Heather is still on the court. And Peggy Evans at the free throw line for Tennessee. In and out. And Heather Burge the rebound. Staley thought about a three-pointer. Audra Smith in the game right now for Virginia number 54. Steal by Dana Head. He wisely pulls up at a disadvantage in a one-on-three situation. Timmy Reese limping around on an ankle. Looks like she turned it. Evans backs in on Burge trying to draw that fifth foul. And Burge got the block and then gets out of the way while Head puts it in. Dina Head with 18. The lead is three for Tennessee. Staley trying to even it. Rebound, Dina Head. Trying to clear everybody out. Jump ball. And it'll be Tennessee basketball on the possession arrow. A brand new mom. And a coach with 301 wins looking for a title. Adrian Charles. At 6-3, brings it into the front court. We're under six minutes. Tennessee leads by three. Tammy Reese guarding Lisa Harrison. Lisa Harrison at six foot. Tammy at 5-6. Tremendous mismatch. Dean ahead. Had it stripped by Cardoza. Great defensive job by Tanya Cardoza. Well, Tanya Cardoza needs to wake up offensively as well. Staley got in and was fouled by Charles. That's four on Deidre Charles. Jim Davis, the coach of Clemson, told me this year that this Virginia team has three players on the floor that just refuse to lose. That's Tammy Reese, Tanya Cardoza with the strip right here, and Dawn Staley. And you can see as each new thing happens, they, they yell and they try to encourage one another. Deidre Charles sits with four fouls and five and a half minutes to play. 19 points, 13 rebounds for Deidre Charles. Melanie Wagoner back in for Heather Burge. And Dawn Staley at the free throw line, her first trip to the line. 18 points on the day, though, for the player of the year. With that point, Dawn ties for second place on the Virginia all-time scoring list. Only a junior. Missed the second and got her own rebound. And then I think lost it off her foot. She did. Fifty-three, fifty-one. It's been all we could ask for, huh? Championship game. Incredible the way these players are able to fight through the fatigue as well. Tina Head loses it out of bounds. Eighteen, make it nineteen. Tennessee turnovers. 
There's no question that the fatigue is showing and the little mistakes that are being made, but the way these teams, both of them, are playing defense is really a tribute to their stamina. Cardoza to Staley. She works baseline and she's fouled. That one will go on Nikki Caldwell, her second with five minutes and one second to play. Jody Adams comes back in. Nikki Caldwell will sit. And right now out there for Tennessee, Peggy Evans, the only non-starter. The rest, Castile, Lisa Harrison, Dina Head, Jody Adams. At the free throw line is Dawn Staley. And you can see how many attempts Tennessee had at the line, twice as many as Virginia. Dawn Staley out of Philadelphia. Played pickup games at 25th and Diamond Street in Philly. Same neighborhood as Hank Gathers. And played a lot of hoops with the guys. And she's playing some serious hoops in this title game. We're tied at 53. Five minutes in a tie championship game in New Orleans. Dean ahead, trying to create something. Adams outside. And Lisa Harrison with a rebound. Staley got the steal but stepped on the baseline. Scrappy defense by both teams and foul trouble all over the place. Heidi Burge already out. Deidre Charles, the All-American for Tennessee on the bench with four. <laughs> Evans is her replacement and she just picked up her fourth foul. Pat Summit having to go to some more depth on the bench. They really don't have as much depth in the post position. You can see the nice position by Melanie Wagner. You got to think Pat Summit's got to go back to Deidre Charles pretty soon. Four minutes and some change left. And as we say that, Deidre gets over there by the scorer's table. She's coming back in as soon as possible. Tammy Reese, little one-hand hook. And Virginia regains the lead by two. We're under four minutes. And would Tennessee love a break to get their All-American center back in there? Steel wheels, misses, and a big, big rebound by Audra Smith. Tammy Reese digging deep to try to find a little more energy. As both these teams are in the final three and a half minutes of this championship game. 55-53. Shot clock. As you see, it's at 10. Cardoza. Nice move with the left hand. If Tanya Cardoza can come alive offensively, Virginia's in great shape. Virginia with a four-point lead. Pat Summit calls a timeout. A 7-0 Cavalier run, and they lead by four. I remember the University of Tennessee and what everyone has meant to me, and I just hope that you know I can go out in style by winning a national championship. If not, that's not the end of the world, but that's something that I wish that this team and myself could do it to get back to Pat and the University of Tennessee. Deidre Charles, an All-American, who's back in the lineup when they desperately need her. Lisa Harrison, outside with a jumper. Harrison's first basket of the second half cuts the Virginia lead to two. We're under three minutes. This is the championship NCAA women's basketball. And what a game it's been. Brad, Jody Adams, who's guarding Dina Evans right now, number three for Tennessee, is the one who took two key charges in the last game and in their regional final game. When in doubt, go to your go-to. Dawn Staley has 23. 59-55. Let's see if Tennessee, they're going to go with Dina Head. She's the one that had the great first half. She missed that one. Big battle for the rebound. Jump ball possession will go to Virginia. Uh, 
Heather Burgess' father looks on. Dawn Staley starting to get cramps, Brad. She's walking on her heels. That's a sign that she's trying to stretch out those calves. Right now, it's Audra Smith, Tammy Reese, Dawn Staley, Tanya Cardoza, and Heather Burge for Virginia. For Tennessee, it's Castillo, Head, Adams, Charles, and Lisa Harrison. With two minutes and change left, the four-point Virginia lead. Tammy Reese picked up a dribble and calls a timeout. Smart move with 1.57 to go. The Cavaliers by four. Lake Front Arena in New Orleans, Louisiana. Virginia by four with just under two minutes to play. There's what we have left. Virginia with three timeouts. Tennessee with two. Neither team with a foul to give, and it would be the Lady Balls, the Lady Balls basketball in a jump ball situation. Don Staley with leg cramps and all. Out there, the All-American leading the show and leaves it behind her back for Tammy Reese. Rebound, Jody Adams. The game clock in the corner of your screen. It is 59-55. Tennessee trying to cut the lead to two. Double Brad, team really, down on Deidre Charles. Excuse me, I'm really surprised in the last possession that Virginia took a shot like that by Tammy Reese when they've got a four-point lead. And Reese on a two-on-one and a foul and a good one by Jody Adams to prevent the basket. It's amazing that they didn't use a little bit more of the shot clock the last possession that they had. Tammy Reese is going to go to the free throw line where she's 0 for 2 today. A 5'6 junior. Out of Eldred, New York, as you see her teammate, Don Staley, trying to run off the leg cramps. Here's Tammy Reese. And right now the assistant coach is massaging the, the calves of Don Staley to try to give her some relief. Tammy Reese, 0 for 3 from the line today. That gives Virginia a five-point lead with 1.25 to play. Tennessee needs some points in a hurry. Tina Head got a nice pick from Deidre Charles. Got herself free. You would expect in this situation, to see the ball in either of the hands of Dina Head, who has created offensively all day long for this Tennessee, or Deidre Charles, pounding it inside because she's just too strong for the post players on Virginia. Nice penetration move, but what a tremendous shot. She had all of her shot taken from her left hand to her right hand. More court side strategy by the Tennessee assistant coaches with Pat Summit. Dina Head completes a three-point play. She's had a brilliant game, 19 points. They get 21 points for Dina Head. And now Virginia opts to utilize the shot clock more. Folks, we're under a minute in a two-point championship game. Ten Virginia seconds on 60, the shot clock. Tennessee 58, and Reese is going to try to make the move to the hoop. She got it and couldn't connect. And the ball last touched by Lisa Harrison. Pat Summit, she says, I may have had better teams in a championship game, but I have not had to coach effort on this club. 48 seconds to go. A two-point game and a timeout Virginia. We'll be back. to go. Pat Summit and Debbie Ryan have had their words with their respective teams. It is 60-58 Virginia. Brad, Tennessee right now has got to either create the turnover or foul quickly. They need the ball. Staley got the inbound. You don't want to foul her. She's an 82% free throw shooter. Virginia obviously wants to use as much of the shot clock as they can. Either Burge or Smith is who you'd like to foul if you're Tennessee. They're both on the court. And we're down to 30 in the game and 11 seconds on the shot clock. And look for a clear out for Dawn Staley. Here she comes, one-on-one. 
can't get the jumper. Deidre Charles the rebound. Tennessee is going to have a chance to either tie or win it. Deidre has got to advance the ball. Timeout. Tennessee. Good job, says Pat Summit. That gives her 12 seconds to let her troops try to win or tie this game. for Tennessee and Virginia. And while they're in them, we'll tell you tonight on CBS, 60 Minutes has had a lot of strange encounters, but the one they had with a man in the kitchen of his house has to be among the strangest. How so? Well, they'll show you tonight on CBS. That's followed by Murder, she wrote. And tonight's Chrysler Showcase presentation, Eyes of a Witness, starring Daniel J. Travati and Jennifer Gray. That's tonight on CBS. And I'll tell you what, if that lineup is as close as this championship game, you're in for a big night here on CBS. Brad, strategy for Tennessee. You're going to see it in the hands of either Deidre Charles inside. They're going to pound it inside, hope that she can get a three-point play or at least a short bucket. Or Dina Head, who has created on the penetration dribble all afternoon. Both are capable of a three-point play. Tennessee has not had a three-point field goal all day. You don't assume that they're going to be that risky and try to win it at the buzzer, but you never know. And now that they've had a look at the Virginia defense, we'll have another Tennessee timeout. We'll be back in New Orleans in a moment. Virginia, number one in the country most of the year. Pat Summit has won two championships already at Tennessee. She needs two points to have a shot at a third. Get ahead. Baseline move. Was she fouled? Yes. With seven seconds to go. Foul is going to be on Staley. And that's Dawn Staley's fourth. And just in case we go to overtime, keep in mind some of the foul trouble we have. Dina Head, a 5'10 junior out of Canton, Michigan. She's a 72% free throw shooter. She's leading Tennessee with 21 points. She is three for six from the line today. These are the two biggest free throws of her career. Dina Head has done it all for them today. And Debbie Ryan wants Dina Head to think about that last free throw. Timeout, Virginia. to 59 with one free throw left coming up for that young lady tomorrow night on cbs a prelude to a championship pat o'brien and the gang with a pregame show then jim nance and billy packer have the big one for the men in indianapolis it's kansas and duke tip off at 10 after 9 eastern time tomorrow night on cbs sports and after two great semifinals and not only the women, but the men yesterday on our semifinal Saturday. The championship for the women today, the championship for the men tomorrow. It's been hoop heaven on CBS. Brad, if Dina Head should happen to miss this foul, there's no question that Tennessee has, has to foul right away once again to try to put Virginia on the line to give them another chance at a possession. Cavaliers huddled around Debbie Ryan in her 14th year as head coach at Virginia. 
named this week the Naismith Coach of the Year. Somebody asked her at the beginning of the season, Debbie, what's your biggest fear? She said, not winning it. Mr. Burge clapping on. Both these coaches have over 700 wins between them. 17 years for Pat Summon at Tennessee and 14 years for Debbie Ryan at Virginia. I'm not, gonna give a, I'm not going to give ages away, but they're still in their 30s, <laughs> just to give you an idea of how much these two coaches have accomplished so quickly. Seven seconds left. Dina Head with 22 points. Former Michigan Player of the Year. Boy, she'll be the toast of Tennessee if she hits this free throw for the tie. Don't go away. We might have overtime. Dawn Staley might have the last shot of the game. We're going to overtime. of regulation Tennessee and Virginia tied at 60 and you saw the reaction of Pat Summit who saw Dina Head hit two free throws and saw her Lady Vols score the last five points of regulation to cut a 60 55 lead to send it to overtime she got what she wanted Mimi now what she get out of these troops I think this overtime favors Tennessee to be honest with you Brad because this Virginia team is very very tired their strategy is to run the ball but I don't know if they have it in their legs anymore Dawn Staley got one final shot off, but it just caromed off, and Burgess follow was after the buzzer. No doubt an up-and-coming Virginia Cavalier. The lucky kid, Tyler Summit. He slept through a few games this year. We saw him th sleep through most of the Tennessee-Texas regular season game. I don't think he could sleep in here if he tried. And there's Mom. Her team's taking Virginia to overtime. She certainly hadn't slept through this game, I'll tell you that. Tyler Summit. Open Mommy can win a third championship. And there's Dina Head hit the two free throws that gave Tennessee the opportunity. We've got five new minutes on the clock. Brad, it's important to note that Dina Head was one of the key players in that 89 championship as well. She was only a freshman then, had to play a point guard position that was not familiar with to her, and she led her team to the 1989 national championship. And Tennessee will have the opening possession of the overtime. Time these two teams met was in the East Regional Final last year. It went to overtime, and Virginia won it. Dina Head almost traveled. Jody Adams, three-pointer. Comes out, and Heather Burge clears it off for the Cavaliers. In this overtime period, Tanya Cardoza, and I've, I've harped on it the entire game, but she has to come alive offensively for Virginia. It can't just be Tammy Reese and Dawn Staley. And Heather Burge inside. Virginia goes to its half-court game that has not been as effective as Tennessee. Staley, three-pointer. Got her own rebound somehow, but she walked with it. Timeouts. Virginia has two left, having had one left in regulation. Tennessee with one in the overtime. And a foul on Cardoza.
Virginia has to be careful right now that they don't let some of these foul calls or some of these traveling calls affect them emotionally. They've got to contain themselves and conserve their energy. Yesterday, two great semifinals here in New Orleans. And now an overtime championship game, very fitting for a 10th anniversary of NCAA women's college basketball. Little Jody Adams at the free throw line has one point today. Now she has two. She had 19 in the Mideast Regional title game, so she can score if they need her. Today, they've just needed her floor generalship. She can put Tennessee in front by a couple. Second one rattles out. Tennessee by one, we're in overtime, and we're almost a minute into that overtime session. Tammy Reese, short on the three. Dina Head may have gotten a piece of that. I think it was tipped by Dina Head. It looks like Dawn Staley and Tammy Reese are trying to do it all right now for the Virginia team. Castile. Adria Charles has been quiet. Castile ran into traffic and walked with it. Tennessee with 21 turnovers in the game. 19 for Virginia. Nice job on defense that time. Here you can see Kelly Castile running into some trouble as she goes into the Burge defense. Actually, Adria Charles, her teammate, didn't do her any favors there either. 61-60. Tennessee by a point. Cardoza wide open for three. And way short. Staley saved it. Cardoza another chance with a left hand off the glass. Virginia in front by one. Steele backing in on Heather Burge. Burge does a nice job defensively and forced the turnover. Tremendous pass inside by Staley off the rebound. Again, it's Dawn Staley who's playing the heads-up basketball. Tanya Cardoza able to put in the second shot, but it's Tanya Cardo Cardoza who should have followed her own shot on that play. Cardoza really uses that left hand well when she's in close. She has given Virginia a one-point lead. We have two minutes and 40 seconds remaining in this championship game in overtime from New Orleans. With Mimi Griffin, I'm Brad Nessler. Nice to have you along with us on what has been a great game on Easter Sunday here on CBS Sports. Cardoza in the paint with a left hand again. That one won't go, but Burge trying to follow. Charles the rebound. Deidre Charles with yet another rebound. Let's see if they go to her on the other end. She's got 19 points, but she hasn't touched it on offense in a long time. Seen ahead. Foul on the way. I think one of the reasons David Charles hasn't touched it is that Audra Smith for Virginia is doing a nice job defensively. They, they switched up the defensive assignments. Heather Burge taking the other post player and Audra Smith on David Charles. Dina Head, who hit the two free throws that set this game to overtime with seven seconds left. Back at the stripe now. You saw her numbers on the day. She's been nothing short of brilliant. 24 points for Dina Head. She had 10 points in the first half. Followed with 11 more to end regulation and now has two free throws here in overtime. Dina Lisa Head. Harrison goes out and Nikki Caldwell, excuse me. Dina Head was not only brilliant, Brad, she kept them in the, in the game when no one else could do anything offensively, and I've seen her do it before. She's their only offensive creator, and she really took advantage of it this afternoon. Tennessee by a point with two minutes to go in OT. Bird got Charles in the air with a nice move, but the shot comes out. And a foul inside on Tennessee. Let's see, is it on Charles? If it is, she's gone. Deidre Charles is going to foul out. That, that is really major right now because what happens is there goes Tennessee's offensive power on the inside. 
19 points, 15 rebounds, an unparalleled career at Tennessee. As mom looks on, Deidre Charles will sit down. What happens now, Brad, is that Dina head on the outside as she penetrates, always had Deidre Charles to look to if she drew the defense. With Deidre Charles gone, she can go to the freshman Peggy Evans, but Peggy has missed the last few shots because of some fatigue. Lisa Harrison may be the only other player that can help pick up the slack. Meanwhile, this is Audra Smith, her first trip to the free throw line. Off to the right. Foul this time on Virginia. It'll be on Cardoza. So we walk it back down to the other end as the Lady Volunteers huddle around their leader, Pat Summit. Pat knows she has to control this team very well. She's got some young players on the floor for her right now. She has to keep them focused in, as far as what they have to do. We talked about this not being the most talented Tennessee team that Pat Summit has brought to the Final Four. And in my opinion, it's probably the least talented. But what that shows you is that they've done a tremendous job of taking care of the little things all season long. Lisa Harrison comes up short on the free throw. Somehow Evans got the rebound. A three-point Tennessee lead. In low is Bird, trying to kick it back out to Staley, and she's fouled. Either Evans or Dina Head. Both were there. The foul will be on Dina Head. That's her third. Foul is up against the Lady Volunteers, number 11, Dina Head. That's her third. At the free throw line will be Heather Bird. With 10 points and 12 rebounds with her first trip to the free throw line. Can't get it. Lisa Harrison to the rebound. And Tennessee by three with a basketball. Virginia really needs to increase their defensive pressure here and stop Dina Head from penetration. That's their main offensive threat. Dina Head drives on Cardoza, who picks up her fourth foul all in this half. Right now, Tennessee's only off real offensive threat is right here. Dina Head on the penetration. They've got to take care to make sure that they get weak side help. Right there, she used Heather Burge as her pick. She used the Virginia player for her own pick. The Virginia players have to understand that the real threat offensively is Dina Head, and it's really only in penetration. It's not in taking a shot from the outside. So a lot of weak side help is necessary. Dina Head has hit eight straight free throws. If this one goes, she ties a championship record, but it rattled out. Still a four-point lead. Virginia needs two possessions. Dawn Staley works inside. Came up short and somehow got her own rebound and got it off glass. 25 for Staley. It's a two-point game with a minute to go. Virginia's got to throw full-court pressure on, which you, you will see. And here it comes. Adams had a hit by Staley. She comes flying into the press table. She's all right. Trying to make the steal. Debbie Ryan pounds the floor. Exhorting her Virginia defense. They need to get the ball back. Tennessee by two with 50 seconds to play. Again, Dina Head is the only offensive threat, real offensive threat on the floor. Jody Adams doesn't get it. Dawn Staley and Tammy Reese. Staley. No call. It'll go the other way. You can't say enough about the heart of that player, Dawn Staley. Trouble with dehydration after yesterday's game. Leg cramps. That pass tipped by Smith. Reese got it. And do they call a charging foul on Tammy Reese? A big pileup with Nikki Caldwell. I think that's going to be the call. It is. We'll get 
a chance to look at that. Tammy Reese picking up the charging foul, a gigantic one, with 33 seconds to go. You can see Tammy Reese going into the drive, and our, our vision is blocked by Heather Burge. That's a tough call in a championship game, I'll say that much. Caldwell's free throw won't go. And now the foul on Tennessee on Evans. And Peggy Evans has just fouled out. The two key post people for Tennessee are gone. Peggy Evans, a freshman out of Detroit, has had an excellent game again today. She played extremely well yesterday in the semifinal. She leaves with seven points and four rebounds. And she's gone with 32 seconds left. As she embraces Deidre Charles, the All-American already, who has fouled out. And that's the past and the future right there. Deidre Charles, the past great center for this Tennessee team. Peggy Evans replaces Deidre Charles in years to come. At the free throw line, Audra Smith. She missed her only attempt from the strike here in overtime. Burge the rebound. Put it back up and she's fouled. So Heather Burge will go to the line. That foul on Kelly Castile. Two coaches who have used just about all there is to use as their players have over the course of the last two days. And Heather Burge at the line, trying to get the tie. The first one hit everything but the bottom. Heather Burge is only a 55% free throw shooter, so odds are she'll make this one. If she's good on one out of two, this one ought to go, but it won't. And the rebound is Lisa Harrison. Virginia needs to press and foul as soon as possible. The problem for Virginia is Dina Head won't let go of the ball. She's been hitting all the free throws for them. She's their offensive threat. And she knows that she's the best bet from the line since she's been there so many times today. 23 seconds to play. Could they possibly have this good a game Monday night in Indianapolis? I know Jim and Billy and the gang are hoping so. The men's championship on Monday night following a prelude to a championship preview show at 8.30 will tip off at 9.10 on Monday. Kansas and Duke on Monday. Here it's Tennessee and Virginia, and the Lady Vols lead by three in overtime. Marvelous backcourt gems, our players of the game. Dawn Staley of Virginia with 25 points, and Dina Head of Tennessee has 27. And they've got basketball left, they're both juniors. 87 and 89, and will 91 follow? Tennessee, after its unprecedented third women's championship, Dina Head will be all alone on top of the individual record books. If this free throw goes, it does. She's got 28. That's a new championship mark. And she's given her team a four-point lead. Virginia needs two possessions, and they've got a score in a hurry. Staley misses. Got her own rebound. Still can't get it. Lisa Harrison has it for Tennessee. Cardoza picks up the foul and leaves with 11 points. Our third player to foul out. Make it our fourth player. Two on each team. 11 seconds to go. The Lady Vols just 11 seconds away from a win. There was not a timeout. We apologize for that as Lisa Harrison goes to the free throw line and buries it. That's it right there, Brad. Last year, Pat Summit said 
the biggest pain ever, the most hurt ever in her career, was not having her Lady Volunteers have an opportunity to win a national championship on their home floor in Knoxville. We asked her, could anything make up for that? She said, yes, a win in New Orleans could. She's 11 seconds away from it now. Forget men versus women. Pat Summit is going to join a very select group of coaches if she wins this 1991 national championship. The winning odds. A championship in 87, one in 89, and now six points up with 11 seconds to play here. She's been a player on a medal-winning Olympic basketball team. She won a gold as a coach in 84. She's taken Tennessee to the top twice. Debbie Ryan's Cavaliers need a miracle. Next year, the Women's NCAA Final Four, April 4th and 5th in Los Angeles Sports Arena. I hope it's as good as this one's been. Staley for three. Rattle it off the glass. And a timeout with four seconds to go. It is 70 to 67. NCAA basketball is Bob Dekas. Today's Women's National Championship was produced by Michael Burks and directed by Kathy Barreto. Our halftime show produced by George Veris. And we're four seconds away from the end of an overtime championship. Dawn Staley finally got to Jody Adams with two seconds left. The senior producer of CBS Sports is Ed Gorin. Our executive producer is Ted Shaker. With Mimi Griffin, I'm Brad Nessler. This has been all we could ask for and then some. What a weekend of college basketball on CBS. She ain't over yet, folks. The men will have at it tomorrow night. Dawn Staley has just fouled out with 28 points, 12 rebounds, 6 assists, and 3 steals. That's why she was college basketball's player of the year. with Dina Head with 28 points. They match the most ever in a championship game. And what a brilliant performance they gave us. It's important to note also, Brad, that only one senior starter for that Virginia team. So this team will be back, no question about it. Jody Adams at the free throw line where she has her only two points of the day. It comes off, but there's not enough time left for Virginia. The title goes to Knoxville again. She's been to the summit three times now. With baby in tow, she's a champion again. 70 to 67.